Now let's have a look at some signs of jinn possession. It's important to note that you may have one or more of these signs, but that doesn't mean that you are possessed. For example, there was a situation where there was a brother who he said, you know, when I read the Quran from memory, I'm okay. But when I read the Quran from the Mus'haf, from the actual book, I get a really bad headache. So the brother began to think, perhaps I am possessed. It turned out he had poor vision and he needed glasses. So when he was looking at the Mus'haf, he would get these problems. So let's not rush to say I'm possessed. So the first sign is there may be a sudden change in the personality or character of that individual. There used to be somebody who was very gentle. There used to be somebody who was flexible. There used to be somebody who was caring and loving. And suddenly there's a sudden switch in their character or a sudden switch in their personality. Now they are very harsh. They are very rough and tough. The woman from being a woman who was perhaps able to be patient and bear patiently. Now all she wants to do is argue. All she wants to do is curse. All she wants to do is blame, etc, etc. All of these things, they may be due to jinn possession. The individual may have fits. So you may find that they just have random blackouts, often in the toilet or after leaving the toilet, because the toilet is a place of filth. And this is where the shayateen reside. So often in the toilet, they will have a blackout or they will walk out of the toilet and they will just black out. Likewise, there may be a hatred to the Quran or a hatred of the Adhan. When the Adhan is called, the shaytan flees as the messenger salam told us. So if you call the Adhan or if the Adhan is on the television, then they may become very upset or angry or they may just storm out of the room for no apparent reason. Or they may say, get this rubbish off or something like this because they may be possessed. Likewise with the Quran. If they are possessed, then they are going to have a hatred of the Quran, a dislike of the Quran. So if you're reading the Quran, they don't want to be in the same room or they tell you to stop the recitation of the Quran because the Quran is a shifa, the Quran is a healing, the Quran is a mercy. And as Allah says, it only increases those wrongdoers in loss. They may also begin to speak other languages. So perhaps the person is never spoken Urdu in his life or he's never spoken Arabic in his life. Suddenly he becomes fluent in Urdu or he becomes fluent in a different language which he has never ever spoken. And you're thinking, how is that possible? How did you get to that situation where you're able to talk this language? Overnight, you are beginning to speak a different language. There may be a sudden increase in strength or a change in their physical appearance. So for example, there may be a woman who is only five foot two, five foot three, and she's a small woman, yet it takes four or five people just to hold her down. Or there may be a drop in the personal hygiene of the person, or they may have a love of being isolated and secluded in dirty, filthy places. I've had cases where people, they don't take showers for two, three, four weeks on end. From being somebody who's very clean, suddenly they have a dislike of personal hygiene and their personal hygiene is very, very poor. Or they love to be sat in the toilet or they love to just go on randomly two, three o'clock in the morning. They just go and sit under a tree or they just go to the graveyard or they just wake up and sit in the toilet for hours and hours and hours on end. Likewise, there may be a hatred towards Al-Islam. So if the jinn which is possessing them is non-Muslim, because just as we have Muslims and we have non-Muslims, if the jinn which is possessing this individual is a non-Muslim jinn, then it will have a hatred towards Allah, a hatred towards the Quran, a hatred towards Islam in general. Now, these signs and these symptoms, as I've mentioned, they're fairly general. So it may be, for example, that one day a person is upset and the Quran is on or whatever it may be, and they just storm out the room, not because of the Quran, but because they're upset, because they are feeling emotional for whatever reason. So they leave the room. So do we say now this person is possessed? Of course not. We investigate further, what's wrong with you, how are things, etc. And we then take it forward from there. We take our symptoms to somebody who is qualified. All of these things are just signs and symptoms. They are not surefire ways of knowing that you are possessed for sure. 